and motivated that we play tomorrow in the semi-finals of Africa. Um, I think for many people it was unexpected, but we did it and that means that uh, South Africa became a good team. So um, it's also more than 20 years ago that South Africa played the semi-final, even more that we played the final. So that means that we got a lot of motivation. The semi-final we had it already, but that we want to play also next uh, Sunday, the final. We are playing against a very good team tomorrow, number six in the ranking, African ranking. So that means a lot of all players who play abroad. Um, it's a little bit the same situation than a few weeks ago against Morocco. They're also a very good team, players who are playing in Europe with big teams. So um, we can compare it and uh, I think for many people um, Nigeria tomorrow will be the favourite to win that game. But as you know in football it's not always the favourite to win. And we are confident and motivated uh, to try, to try that it doesn't happen and that South Africa is again after more than 20 years in the final. Um, a little update about um, the injury prayer, Tapala Maseka. So he has a muscle injury, grade three, so uh, the tournament for him is finished, but he stays with us. So he doesn't go to South Africa and we don't replace him. Um, there is trouble for the, the problems with visa and the flight and, and if we should replace him, this player will arrive when Thursday or in the worst case maybe Friday. So uh, we don't want to do that and even we have uh, opportunities um, to solve that problem in the group. So uh, for that, um, Tapella will not be replaced but the tournament for him is finished. Williams. Oh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, yeah, we're just proud as a team to be you know, in the semi-finals in the last four. We've worked, we've worked so hard over the last uh, few years. Uh, we've come a long way, you know, as a country, as a team, as a squad. So I'm just proud to be, you know, at this stage. Not so many people, you know, believe in us, but we believe in ourselves and in what we've done the last few years, and we've shown know um, that it's possible so we're looking forward to the game we're excited um, we've obviously we've done our analysis uh, we're looking forward to the game it's going to be a big one obviously there's big rivalry between the two countries and they are obviously the team that knocked us out the last time we were at AFCON you know in 2019 so there's a lot at stake and it's a lot to play for and you know we, we're ready and we're looking forward to the game you can set up questions the gentleman Good morning. Um, Togo Sisi from Far Coast, South Africa. Uh, Ronza, um, I mean, statistics 2000, the last time we were in a semi final, we lost to Nigeria. In the AFCON, we've never beaten them. Um, how does that play out in your mind as, as players when you look at the statistics going into this semi final? No, we don't. Uh, stats don't play the game. You know, um, there's so many stats there's, that were against us this tournament, and we proved, you know, that stats don't play the game. You know, so what happened in the future, in the past, you know, that's in the past. We can't change that. But what we can change is tomorrow. Is tomorrow's result. Is tomorrow's performance. So we don't look at that because that can't change now. Uh, we control what we can control, and that's tomorrow's performance and tomorrow's result. Other questions? Okay. Yeah. Bonjour Hugo, bonjour Adrien. Euh, une question sera en, en, en français. Euh, vous avez une très bonne défense puisque vous avez remplacé le but depuis de, de quelques matchs. Je crois que la deuxième journée de la phase de poule en face, il va avoir euh, une sacrée attaque, même si aussi Man est incertain et resté avec un équilibré Salmon. Voilà. Um, no, we don't fear it. 
but we we know that there are good players. So uh, it's for sure that uh, we will try um, yeah, to do something that they don't be so dangerous. And also uh, their defense is also very good. But um, again, those are things uh, that were said about Morocco also. And we won. So um, those are statistics and uh, we have to take care of it. But uh, it doesn't uh, make us uh, make us fear for, uh, from, uh, for the opponent. So um, on n'a pas peur, pas du tout. Um, on a on a état confiance et uh, on sait très bien que ils ont une très bonne attaque avec des très bons joueurs, David, Nathan, uh, aussi même. Uh, donc uh, ils marquent très facilement. De l'autre côté, ils ont aussi une bonne défense, mais on peut comparer ça avec le Maroc aussi. Uh, donc uh, ils avaient aussi un petit peu les mêmes qualités. Mais à la fin, c'est nous qui ont gagné. Donc on va faire tout pour contrer leur qualité et pour, euh, pour, pour prendre avantage de leur qui euh, font quand même de leur euh, faiblesse. Donc euh, c'est ça, si on peut réussir à faire ça, ben, on a peut-être une grande chance de gagner le match. Uh, coach Hugo Bruce, uh, congratulations for qualifying uh, to this stage. Uh, when you started this tournament, you lost your first game and you've gone ahead to get to this level. What, what do you think is so special about this set of players you have at your disposal? Thank you. My name is Tayo, Afro Sport TV. You know, um, I've always had confidence in the players, even when in South Africa. There were a lot of question marks about it. Um, I think it's very important that you can go on working for a long time with the same players. So you can install something in the team. And uh, when the players have the confidence and the results are following, you are growing like a team. And I think we did that in Afghan also. We had the first game against Mali. We didn't play bad. Not at all. But we lost the game. So uh, the second game was Namibia and that was a good thing for us because it gave us a boost for all the players to, to believe that, yeah, it can, it can happen. After that, okay, uh, you won against Morocco and, and, and so every time you got more and more confident. So now we believe, we believe that we can reach a final. So, um, and, and again, I believe since a long time in those players because they have qualities. We needed such a, that, that kind of tournaments where we have to play a higher level, where we have to do things that normally South African players don't do in the, in the national competition. And we, we succeeded. So that means that, uh, well, that is the reason, I think, why we are now in semi-final. Okay, we'll have on the lady. My name is Janet from Supersport. To the player, you will potentially face a uh, similar new season in Bookman. Are you prepared for this time? Yeah, definitely. Uh, we're looking forward to the challenge. It's going to be tough, but we've been facing similar players throughout the tournament. And I think our defense has been rock solid. Um, I think uh, we've defended extremely well as a team. It's not about me, it's about the team. You know, uh, we pride ourselves in our defending. You can see our strikers, our forward players, our wingers working hard as well to assist us. And I think our, you know, the back four has been amazing throughout the tournament. So we know it's going to be a tough challenge, but one that we're looking forward to. Okay. The gentleman at the extreme end. Okay. Uh, I met the other gentleman. But Let's give the other gentleman an experiment. No, no. I'm dictating the press conference. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get your chance, don't worry. Uh, hello, practically uh, scored from Belgium. Hello, Mr. Cross. Um, I was wondering before the tournament. Uh, First of all, congratulations. Can you speak a little bit louder, please? Sure, sure, sure. Brecht of Lisco from Belgium. 
Before the tournament, you had announced that this might be your last job, or maybe even your final tournament. Throughout the tournament, have you been thinking about it, that this might be your last match, this might be your final pre-match conference, or things like that? Is this something you have been thinking about? No, not at all. Why should I think about that? Uh, um, it's still not an end. <laughs> I, I said, I said, okay, I'm, I'm 71. So I think uh, there is moments to think about s stopping your career. But as long as things going like now, why should I stop? <laughs> I like uh, my job. I like uh, football. Um, so we will see what the what the future will, will bring me. <coughs> but but I think it's totally normal that after a career of 36 years as a coach and 18 years as a professional football player that little by little you start thinking about the end of your career. So, but it's nothing more than that, nothing more than that. My friend now even, how do chance? Sage d'Avoui, RTI, journaliste, Monsieur Hugo Gross, vous êtes belge ou vous parlez français Vous avez la chance d'avoir gagné la Cannes en 2017 avec le Cameroun, beaucoup de personnes ont ça. Alors, six ans après, vous accédez en demi-finale avec une autre nation. En tenant compte de cette expérience de 2017, quel discours on donne à son équipe quand on arrive à ce, à ce stade de demi-finale pour gagner les coups et aller très loin voilà. ben, Premièrement, j'espère que je peux le dire, je suis fier sur moi -même. Quand vous savez être si loin dans les tournois comme la, la CAM, avec des différentes équipes, je pense qu'on peut être fier. Mais de l'autre côté, je sais aussi que c'est pas seulement l'entraîneur. Il faut aussi l'équipe. Et euh, j'avais l'équipe en 2017 avec le Cameroun. J'ai maintenant encore une, une très bonne équipe. Donc on verra où ce qu'on va euh, arriver. Mais de notre côté, on est, on est confiant. Et on verra demain qu'est-ce que ça va donner et si on peut réussir à passer cette demi-finale, alors euh, tout est possible dans un final. Donc euh, j'espère, j'espère euh, d'avoir une deuxième victoire, certainement, parce que ça serait vraiment, une, euh, comment dirais-je, bah, oui, une très belle trophée ou une très belle euh, chose sur mon, mon CV, avoir gagné, avoir gagné deux fois la carte. Ouais, euh, so, so, <laughs> um, Yes, I'm, I'm, I hope that I can say that I can be proud of myself when with two different teams you, you are now in semi-final and you won already in Africa. Um, this is uh, something special for me, certainly. Uh, at the other side, once you are in that um, yeah, phase of the, of, the, of the tournament, you hope to win it also. And when I should <laughs> succeed that, That, that should be a fantastic thing for my CV. But again, it's not only the coach, it's also the team. You need a team. You can't do it with a bad team. So uh, let's see what uh, the semi-final gives us tomorrow. And let's hope that we can go to the final on Sunday. Okay. The gentleman at the back from uh, the video cameraman. He's here. Thank you. Uh, my question goes to... Your name? Oh, Velile from uh, SABC in South Africa. Uh, my question goes to uh, Ronza. Um, congratulations once more, Ronza, on reaching the stage. Uh, I was just looking at the stats. Uh, it's incredible that uh, you're already, I think, on 25 clean sheets um, this season. I'm looking at all the competitions and I look at Mwabali as well. Um, it's just two clean sheets away at home and uh, both of you here, you almost on the same level of clean sheets as well. And what just can you say about him and, and also how you as uh, Premier Party goalkeepers in South Africa, you've, you've bossed this tournament? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy for him. Um, and I had a chat with him, you know, when we played against each other in Port Elizabeth. And he's, <coughs> it's so weird that he told me that I inspire him. You know, and the way that he's playing now, you know, I'm just happy, you know, that I can, you know, inspire someone as a fellow professional, you know. So tomorrow we'll 
share the stage together and we'll just go out there and continue doing what we've been doing, you know, as trying to, to be the best goalkeepers that we can be. And yeah, he's been amazing this season. And um, but tomorrow, hopefully, you know, he can concede, you know, so that we can go into the final. We have a gentleman. Yeah, it's, um, it's a question from Coach. Um, going back on your, all my as Radio France International, going back on your 36 years of experience, uh, that's a long time, obviously. Have you learnt anything in this tournament? Have I learnt something in this tournament? Yeah, for, for an old coach. I think, I think for, me, for me, the most surprising thing is that uh, so many big countries um, we're out very soon in the tournament. Um, and that for me, the reason is that those little countries make a lot of progression in the last years. So when I see that in the quarterfinals, uh, teams like, with all respect, Cap Verde, they won, they won the group stage with teams Ghana and Egypt in the group. I think several years ago it was impossible and it's not them, eh? Guinea, Guinea Equatorial, uh, you have all those little countries where they, know, where they name it, they did it very well and that means that, that it's not anymore only those big countries who uh, dominate AFCON, no, they worked very well in the last years, the little teams and we see them now eh? with a little bit luck maybe Cap Verde could be in the semi-finals or Equatorial Guinea. So that means that, that it's a good thing for African football, I think, that uh, also their uh, little teams um, can, can go to Afghan with a goal of, yes, maybe we can, and that was not possible several years ago. So I've surtout appris que en, en regardant les, les grands clubs, ou pardon, les grands pays qui ont déjà quitté euh, le, tour, le tournoi très tôt, euh, que les petites équipes ont, les petites équipes, hein, on dit les petits euh, pays, euh, ils ont fait beaucoup de progression. Et je pense que ça fait la différence quand vous comparez euh, la, la CAN maintenant, la CAN d'il y a quelques années. C'était presque... Avant la CAN, on pourrait presque dire que okay, ces équipes-là vont jouer les quarts de finale. Ça, c'est plus possible. Vous avez eu le Cap Vert qui, qui gagnait son groupe avec le Ghana et avec l'Égypte. <rire> C'était incroyable il y a quelques années. Donc, euh, ça veut dire qu'ils ont fait beaucoup de progression. Et c'est bon pour le football africain. Euh, maintenant, la CAN, ça va peut-être encore, il va encore plus de suspense. Parce que, au début, avant on disait oui, mais c'est là, c'est là, c'est là, et on était presque toujours, on avait presque toujours raison. C'est plus le cas maintenant. Donc ça veut dire aussi que euh, le niveau va augmenter, et ça c'est une bonne chose. Okay, donc, the gentleman at the back from the video camera. Coach Lorenzo from South Africa. Um, you said off the Cape Verde that it was the worst performance of the tournament. Um, but we've seen South Africa, they, they always dip against smaller nations. Um, I don't know what it is, but against the bigger teams in Africa, they, they raise their motivation, their performance levels, their intensity. So do you think going into the Nigeria game, we can expect a much better performance uh, from the team? As I said already after the game against Cap Verde, it was our worst performance. We didn't play so well. When we saw uh, us playing in the other games, we were much better. I think maybe it was the pressure. Maybe we were too nervous because we knew that there was a lot to lose. That we didn't uh, play our normal game. But for me, it's not a problem uh, with the experience I have. Uh, you don't have to uh, take too much attention on that. Uh, it was special for after so many years we could reach a semi-finals. So everybody was maybe a little bit too tensed and that's why we played not so good. So um, 
I'm not uh, making a problem for tomorrow. <laughs> I know, I know that the players will be ready and uh, that we will do everything to reach those finals. Okay. Yeah. Another question. Coach Hugo Bros, Hakim Kashgut, en commentateur francophone, bon, algérien avant tout. Euh, déjà, je voulais vous féliciter parce que, bon, comme vous êtes déjà passé par l'Algérie, vous avez déjà entraîné la GSK Bili, le Nasser Hussein Day. On connaît Hugo Bros, c'est quelqu'un qui donne énormément sa chance aux jeunes joueurs locaux. Là, vous avez fait peut-être un coup de poker en euh, montant une équipe sud-africaine composée pour la majorité de joueurs qui évoluent en Afrique du Sud. Est-ce que c'était un coup de poker Est-ce que c'est réfléchi Et déjà, comme je le disais, félicitations parce que vous êtes parmi les seuls coachs lors de cette Coupe d'Afrique qui a misé sur les joueurs locaux et non pas trop sur les joueurs professionnels. Et on en voit le résultat. Merci à vous. Et quel est le secret Et que pense donc le gardien donc également sur le fait que plusieurs joueurs locaux font actuellement partie des équipes nationales et la preuve est là, le joueur africain prouve plus ce qu'il est capable de faire que certains joueurs qui évoluent à l'étranger. Merci. Bah, premièrement, premièrement, je pense que euh, si on est coach d'un pays où tous les joueurs, ou presque tous les joueurs jouent en Europe, que normalement vous choisissez ces joueurs-là parce qu'ils jouent dans un, un championnat beaucoup plus élevé, beaucoup plus intense. Euh, c'est tout à fait normal, donc euh, en Afrique du Sud, on n'a pas tellement de joueurs qui jouent sur un très haut niveau euh, dans des pays euh, étrangers. Pardon Sur le plan continental, Oui, oui, mais enfin, euh, quand même, il y a quand même une grande différence, par exemple, entre nous et notre adversaire de demain. Euh, donc, d'un côté, on est un peu obligé de prendre ces joueurs qui jouent en, dans le championnat local, mais ça ne veut pas dire... Ça ne veut pas dire que ces joueurs sont mineurs aux autres. Donc, euh, si vous pouvez leur donner euh, euh, la confiance et euh, qu'ils croient dans leur qualité, je pense qu'il y a des choses qui sont possibles. Et on preuve ça maintenant avec l'Afrique du Sud. Donc, on a donné notre confiance à ces joueurs-là. On a quelques joueurs qui jouent à l'étranger. Mais, ils savent aussi, ou ils ont quand même senti aussi dans cette canne que avec euh, le niveau qu'on a en Afrique du Sud, qu'on ne dirait pas arriver en demi-finale. Donc ils ont vraiment surmonté un petit peu euh, de leur qualité et euh, ils, ils se sont adaptés à ce football, disons, moderne, euh, européen même un petit peu. Et ça fait que maintenant, on a une équipe qui joue totalement différente comme une équipe sud-africaine. Il y a beaucoup d'intensité, il y a beaucoup de physique, il y a, beaucoup, il y a aussi de, de, de la force. Donc on a changé ça un petit peu en choisissant les joueurs qu'il fallait. Et les joueurs ont compris qu'en faisant ça, que c'est possible de faire des résultats. Et la preuve est là maintenant. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Tokoni from uh, Football Fans Tribe, Media Athletes in Nigeria. My question is to the coach. Um, Victor, I I didn't travel with the Nigerian team yesterday. I want to know how much of an impact that has in your uh, preparations ahead of the game. Thank you. The motiv our motivation. You know, you know if, uh, if you are not motivated to semi final of African, um, yeah, I think then you have to stop playing football. So. Uh, You don't need other motivations. Uh, you play semi-final, you can be in the final of AFCON. Uh, you play against a good team. Motivation is enough for us to bring a good game tomorrow and to try to win it. Okay, yeah. Absence of Victor Yes, yes. He did not travel. Yeah, but okay. Uh, it's not only Osimen. <laughs> so, uh, again, I said... Uh, In the beginning already that we play a very good team. So Nigeria became a very good team with very good players who play all over Europe. So uh, it will be tough tomorrow. But that is also a motivation for us to prove that uh, we are as good as they are and that we can win it also. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh.